These shows are SmackDown and Collision you're referring to? Yes. Or, or I believe Rampage, Collision. Which one? Whatever you want, dude. Well, I watched all three of them. Let's well, get, get going, brother. Hey, let's get SmackDown out of the way while we have time. All right. TD Garden, Boston, Massachusetts. What a fine place to have anything. Professional wrestling, sports, life. It's an awesome place. Check it out if you have a chance. Boston Garden, Boston Mass, Shotzi and Charlotte opened up the show, taking on EO, Sky, and Bailey. Damage control seemingly had things won, but Asuka came out looking like a clown, and she stole the woman's belt from Dakota Kai, who was ringside. Charlotte sent EO off the apron with a boot. Shotzi hit Bailey with a cross like a DDT, and they picked up the win. This really was there to set up Asuka getting in the ring, dancing with the woman's title, and going face to face with EO. So it looks like we're heading towards a singles contest. We are. Two weeks EO. from now, they have announced that match. SmackDown. Jimmy Uso. I don't know what's going on here. Apparently, he wants to be back in the bloodline. Yes, he says he's never officially been kicked out, so he must be in. And Paul says, well, you're in, but you're not really in until Roman gives it the okay. And so he wants uh, Jimmy to take care of AJ. And, uh, you know, AJ uh, goes after Paul. Jimmy attacks him, makes the save for Paul. And that sets up uh, Jimmy and AJ for the main event. Seemed like they kind of ran out of things to do there this week. They're in a lull the right line. now. We're just kind of, you know, just kind of doing whatever till we get to Rumble season, I think, is the way it's going to be. Mm. And I think that we're going to get Roman Reigns and L.A. Knight. I, I honestly got to think that's going to be the, the championship match for uh, Royal Rumble. Well, that's a good direction because L.A. Knight is over with this Beantown crowd and every crowd that he's in front of nowadays. Gets them cheering for him as he talks about beating up the Miz. This brought out Grayson Waller, who then brought out Austin Theory. Knight told these mush-mouthed, dim-witted halfwits that tonight on Legends Way in Boston, Mass., they're going to get beat up in a legendary way. Yeah. I was wondering, Brian, mm. this would have been a perfect segment to get the return of the dummy. Yeah, we didn't. We got uh, Marble Mouth Mush Face yeah. or something like that. I forget what he said. Do you remember on TNA, he had the button? He had a stand. Eli Drake would stand up there and smash it and call people dummies. Dummy, yeah. I, I, I actually do not remember this, but uh, maybe they'll bring the button back. Hey, you know what? Last week, I went on a uh, what I thought was just a nothing happening commentary on old Austin Theory. Because he had the most boring ass match with just long chin locks, and it was just nothing happening. I think it was him and uh, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But anyway, the point is, for some it reason, was him and L.A. Knight. Uh, this no, it was a different match. <laughs> was it? it? This was one of those things where it went all over the internet. Uh, wrestling reporter offers advice to Austin Theory. I'm like, God, you got nothing better to do. You literally got nothing better to do than to make this a headline story. And you know, I, I was like, come on, like. I'm really in the wrong for saying that he should do more than lay on the mat in chin locks in 2023. It was the Ray Mysterio Yeah, it was a Ray match. match. My God, like, can you imagine having a match that boring with Ray? Well, anyway, I don't think you listen to my advice at all. And, in fact, all of those articles were like, uh, uh, WWE wrestler advised not to listen to a uh, wrestling reporter. And that one I had to read because I was like, Who's, who advised him that? And it turned out it was like people in the comments section were advising him not to listen to me. I was like, my God, what, what a life I live. But anyway, so he has a, he he goes in there with L.A. Knight. And, uh, man, this L.A. Knight Miz match they had a, a week ago was the most generic, nothing happening, mid-90s, boring match you've ever seen. And I thought, oh, my God, now we've got L.A. Knight and Austin Theory. Like, God help me. But you know what? It was good. They went in there, and they worked hard. And at the end of the day, I thought they had a much better match than I was expecting. And uh, L.A. won with that stunner after Theory avoided going into a buckle that uh, old Grayson had yanked off. It, I thought this match was good. It's a cravat face buster. Whatever, dude. Not a stunner. He, he's being stone cold in the rock. His two finishes are the people's elbow and the stunner. 
I mean, you can change them a little bit, but we all know what's going on. It's not a mystery. I'm not the only one saying it. Come on. L.A. Knight was backstage. He interrupted Adam Pierce and Paul Heyman, said that he wants a rematch with The Miz next week, which we're going to get. And then there was an interaction between Paul and Knight where Paul told him, next time he's in the room, knock first. So there's your setup for the future. They're moving, actually, we mentioned kind of like a holding pattern on this show, but they at least move forward with the storylines outside of the bloodline towards Roman Reigns and the bloodline with uh, what happened later on and LA Knight here. So more people are getting involved in the main event. Yeah. The Judgment Day, who now can appear on both shows legally, I guess, even though they've been on both shows. Everybody can. Everyone's going to be on both shows till Vince comes back. Well, he's gone. Good. After today, right? Nah, kinda. he's still, he's still. Kind of. Yeah. So the, they're the unified tag champs. Finn talked for a little bit. Then Dom tried to speak and just got buried in jeers and boos by the crowd. Damian Priest says they did something that the Bloodline and Roman Reigns could not do. They took the belts off Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Eventually, the Brawling Brutes came out. Well, minus Sheamus, so it's Butch and Ridge Holland. They get in the ring. Butch snaps Finn's fingers. They clear the ring, and their scheduled contest began. Butch of Ridge Holland uh, took on Finn Balor and Damian Priest. And the Judgment Day, the tag team champion, this match was great. Won the match. Yep, won the match with a South of Heaven on Ridge. Priest hit another one onto Butch, throwing him onto Ridge. Finn hit the coup de gras, and they got the win. And afterwards, as Judgment Day celebrated, Bobby Lashley's music hit. He and the Street Profits came down, went face to face with the Judgment Day, and told them he's right. Judgment Day is right. The bloodline is crumbling. But it's going to be Lashley and the Street Profits taking over. Man. And then the main event set up over the past two weeks. AJ Styles versus Jimmy Uso. This match is going on. Paul Heyman shows up on the ramp with Solo. who Paul told Jimmy earlier was not even there. They uh, went at it, slapped each other in the face. Jimmy and an Inziguri. AJ answered with a Pele kick. Hit the forearm on Jimmy on the floor. And Uchi Garoshi in the ring. And then he sent Jimmy to the floor. Or I'm sorry, Jimmy sent AJ to the floor. Solo was stalking him. Jimmy wanted him to attack, apparently. He went outside. They argued. AJ pushed Jimmy into Solo, hit the phenomenal forearm, got the win, pinned Jimmy Uso. And as he went back up the ramp, Finn Balor and Damian Priest came out, beat him down, threw him in the ring. Solo hit the Samoan spike. A lot of people stood around staring at each other, and the show ended. Not a fan of this main event. Yeah, the main event was just there. But uh, it is very interesting. They've taken the two hottest storylines and the two hottest groups, and they're they're putting them together for something. And uh, presumably they'll also split and feud. And uh, theoretically, like, if you did Judgment Day versus Bloodline at Survivor Series, that's a pretty that's a pretty big match. So we'll see what they end up doing here. I'm calling it Down Granny's Memory Lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. This yeah, is new stuff. This is more up to date. You know, I'm I more... see. Okay. This is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just No, saw. no, okay. no, no. <laughs> the <laughs> New Testament. Everyone let her go. We lived on a farm 10 miles east of Baker. More yeah. recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say, this isn't new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're just going to be quiet. And you, am I out of my mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm fining Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined $100. No. It was Martell's and Hebes. Hebes? Martell. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes? The daughter, Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs>
You thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.